Philippians. Chapter number three, beginning with verse number 12. I don't mean that I am exactly what God wants me to be. I have not yet reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it and make it mine. That's what Christ Jesus wants me to do. It is the reason he made me his. Brothers and sisters, I know that I still have a long way to go, but there is one thing I do. I forget what is in the past and try hard, as hard as I can mm -hmm. to reach the goal before me. Yeah. I keep running hard yes. towards the finish line yes. to get the prize yes. that is mine because God has called me through Christ Jesus to life up there in heaven. Yeah. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments on this afternoon, I want to talk to you from the subject a relentless pursuit. A relentless pursuit. A relentless pursuit means consistently striving towards the goal that God has set before us. Mm -hmm. MIT Reddick, it involves letting go of the past. All right, all right. Focusing on what lies ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. And making a determined effort to achieve the ultimate prize that God has in store for us. It entails determination and perseverance in pursuing God's purpose with zeal and dedication. Regardless of any challenges that may come our way. Amen. Today, my brothers and my sisters, we need to acknowledge that in order to deepen our relationship with Jesus, we must recognize the areas in our lives where our words and our actions don't align with God's expectations. Brother Jason, once we acknowledge these discrepancies, mm -hmm. we must commit ourselves to turning away from the things that displease God. Uh -huh. And we need to open ourselves to all that God has for us. Right. Not only are we looking for the prize, but we should be walking in the holiness and the righteousness of God. Our primary target or our main objective is to continuous, continuously grow in our likeness to Christ and enhance our awareness of him. It's critical to realize that even though we may have been on this journey a long, long time, there's still work that needs to be done because we have not been perfected yet. Therefore, our responsibility is to keep persevering and pressing forward in our spiritual growth. The songwriter says, we are trying higher and higher, day by day getting closer to my Lord. With the 
Lord. Ask my leader, my God and my keeper. Elder Kill, I'm going to get home someday. Thank God, I'm going to make it home. As we journey towards being more like Christ and increasing our awareness of him. So we do understand this is twofold. Mm -hmm. We should be growing in our Christ likeness. And we should be growing in our awareness of what he desires. But we understand that there are going to be challenges as we strive to be Christ-like and more aware of him. Reverend Slater, we understand that there are going to be obstacles. But we have to have a mindset to be persistent and determined and be in refusing to allow anyone or anything come between us and Christ. We should be advancing every day. And our ultimate aim, and I want you to listen to me closely, our ultimate aim as we seek to lay claim to the promises God has for us to attain come through us persevering and pressing forward no matter what comes our way. We can't stop. We can't stop moving. Even in challenging times, we got to keep pressing. When we're sick, we got to keep pressing. When folks talk about us, we got to keep pressing. No matter what comes our way, we got to keep pressing. We can't look back because the songwriter said, Yesterday is gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the day, way, one day at a time. Our focus is not the past. Tell your neighbor, it's not the past. It's not the past. Our focus, Brother Leon, is moving forward. Each day, we need to be building momentum and make doing our best to make progress towards achieving the future that God has planned for us. I don't know about you, but I want the future that God has in store for me. And we have to understand, we have to make every day, say every day, every day, Sister Rose Frank must be meaningful. Well. Understand this, time waits for nobody. Yes. And once a moment in time has gone past, you cannot get it back. But my brothers and my sisters, we must engage day in and day out in a relentless pursuit of all that God has for us to do. If it be struggles or not, we still have to remain consistent. See, understand, Ray, that there may be challenges along the way, but when it comes to Christ, we must engage in a relentless pursuit. There may be obstacles hindering our progress, but when it comes to being resilient, we must engage in a relentless pursuit. There will be moments of that. There will be moments of frustration, but we must engage in a relentless pursuit. There may be instances where we experience fear. There may be darkness in the valley. There may be storms that we have to endure. There may be times of trial and there may be times of testing. There may be seasons of waiting and there may be battles that we have to fight. 
But when we come to the process that leads us to our purpose, we must engage in a relentless pursuit. The Apostle Paul, he identifies himself as the author of this letter. And it is universally accepted by even the most critical scholars. This letter, it is addressed to the Christians living in the Roman colony of Philippi. It is important to recognize that Philippians, Sister Sharon, is known as the book of joy. Are y'all with me? Paul, if you read the book in its entirety, encourages God's followers to embrace the joy found in the Lord and in his kingdom, rather than being solely influenced by our external circumstances. In this context, when he talks about joy, it refers to maintaining internal stability regardless of our external conditions. Paul was well suited to write this letter because he writes this letter while he is in prison. Therefore, the primary theme of Philippians is encouragement. The key message for us on today is to keep running. I'm gonna let that sink in. Our mess, our thing is for us to keep running. And Brother Herb, we understand if we're going to keep running, we got to be in shape. What that means is that you just can't run on Sunday. Think it was. You just can't run on Sunday and expect to run the race. You can't just exercise one time a week. But Leon, you can't just hoop on all Sunday. You gotta hoop all week. Amen. You gotta exercise your spirituality regularly. I'm gonna say it one more time. You have to work out regularly. You have to regularly read and study the Bible. You have to pray regularly. You just can't show up on Sunday and show out. That's called being a phone. But, Brother Woodard, we are to run continuously without stopping. How do I know? Come in, Janet Smith. Uh-oh. Oh, That's what my cardiologist said. <laughs> <laughs> running is in the present tense. Uh-huh. What that means, Reverend Slater, is you should be running now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not only should you be running now, but you must run continuously. <laughs> but because we understand that we are depending on God's power working in our lives. So we got the power to do it. We just have to have a made up mind to allow God to work through us. See, the time is over for laziness in the church. The time is over for letting somebody else do the work because we are running 
for the prize that God has promised us. But we understand, in Paul's condition, he was totally depending on God. And see, if, you, if, if you're a Bible studier, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 29, he describes the Christian life as labor and striving. If you jump over to 1 Timothy 6, 12 and 2 Timothy 4, 7, he, he refers to the Christian life as the good fight of faith. He taught that despite all the struggles and tribulations we endure, we must earnestly, authentically, and boldly into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Paul repeatedly, repeatedly emphasizes the inevitability of our suffering because they're going to be some suffering. All right. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Just because you walk down the aisle, John, mm. that haven't made life easy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. In fact, Brother Solomon, it guarantees some struggle. It guarantees some heartache. It guarantees that there are going to be some lonely nights. <coughs> but we must boldly run. And we're running to win. So let's just, let, let me throw a basketball analogy in. That's the coach you play. When you run your suicides, you have to run with maximum effort. Amen. Am I right, Leon? Right. You have to run if you want to be prepared for the game, giving maximum effort. You can't come to practice and jog. <laughs> I see you thinking the Simpson. We can't come to HMBC jogging. We can't have a job in our spirit. We need to get to the place where we got a sprint in our spirit. So pep in our step. All right. But there will be struggles. Think it was everybody ain't gonna like you. Everybody's not gonna agree with your decision. But it is not our mandate to please one another. You're not running for the prize that most of got for you. We are running for the prize that God has for us. And when we're running for God, we got to run like we mean it. But as we run, we must be sincere. We have to be aggressive. Amen. And we have to be continuously running. Hallelujah. Regardless of what we go through. Hallelujah. So if you're sick, sincere, aggressive, yes. and continuous running. If we'll talk about you, sincere, aggressive, and continual running. If they don't agree with you, sincere, aggressive, and continual running. With this understood, we must grasp the fact that we should never stop. We should never give up. We should never throw in the towel. Tell your neighbor, never slow down. See, we may encounter Catastrophic circumstances. Digging the fifth. Never stop running. And never slow down. The results we get may not always align with our hopes. But we never stop running. And we never slow down. Unforeseen difficulties may cause discouragement. 
We never stop running. We never slow down. Insurmountable challenges may seem to consume our process that leads us to our purpose. But we never stop, Elder Kid. And we never slow down. Understand, our goal, and I want to say it one more time, is to be continuously moving. Yeah. And we continuously move with an aggressive nature. I didn't say sinful. All right, oh. amen. All right, aggressive. Not sinful, but aggressive. We, are, we must be willing to withstand the blows of the adversary. Because I'm going to tell you something, the blows are coming. But you've got to be able to stand there and take a licking and keep on ticking. And not only must you be able to take a licking and keep on ticking, you've got to be able to recover quickly. Amen. You gotta know how to recover from difficult situations. And as we begin to maneuver in this way, we will begin to grow in our Christ likeness and our awareness of Him. It don't matter how long we've been in the church. We must recognize our need to improve our spiritual condition. Amen. Since none of us are perfect, Hallelujah. there's need for improvement. Amen. It's not something to belittle anybody, but it's something that we need to do if we're going to grow in our Christ likeness, in our awareness of Him. See what Paul says. I press on mm -hmm. to run or follow after. He speaks of an aggressive and energetic endeavor. Paul directs us to pursue the spiritual prize with all our strength, yes. all our might, mm -hmm. and with everything that we have within us. We are to pursue the prize with everything that is in us, even if it requires straining or pushing every spiritual muscle in our body. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, our pursuit of Christ must be authentic. It must be aggressive and it must be an energetic endeavor regardless of what life looks like or what challenges may come our way we must seek to be growing in Christ daily and we are to seek Christ with all our heart all our soul and all our mind. And we cannot worry about getting weary while we're trying to do good because no matter what obstacles we face, we must run this race to win. Yeah. All right. I love, I love. Yes, Lord. Our mindset must be focused, Sister Patty, on being victorious. Mm. No matter what. The songwriter says, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today, Super Bowl Sunday, is mine. I told Satan, get the stuff in. Victory today is mine. I don't know about you, but is victory yours on today? So with all of that said, how will we, as God's laborers, mm -hmm. press forward 
to a higher level of Christ likeness and awareness as we strive to perfect it in the midst of the process that leads to our purpose, even in a troublesome world. Number one, as disciples, we must embrace a relentless pursuit of Christ's likeness and the awareness of him. As a disciple, embracing the pursuit of Christ's likeness involves intentionally seeking to model our lives after Christ. It involves imitating Christ's character and imitating his love and sharing his teachings. This requires, listen to me closely. Here's what I found. Dedication. <laughs> commitment. And a desire to draw closer to Christ in all aspects of our lives. Number one, we must embrace a relentless pursuit of Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. But not only must we embrace a relentless pursuit of Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. Number two, we must strive to engage in self-examination mm -hmm. yes, yes. and walk in humility as we pursue Christ's likeness yes, yes. and the awareness of Him. Amen. Understand that self-examination is a critical step mm -hmm. to spiritual growth. Yes. We say it every first Sunday. Mm -hmm. So let a man yeah. examine himself. Right. Self-examination is critical to our growth. It involves honest and, and honest self-examination. Honest self-observation. We acknowledge our strengths and our weaknesses before God. And we are willing to address the areas of our lives that need improvement. Walking in humi humility allows us to recognize our continual need for God's grace and God's guidance in our journey. Do we understand that there is a continual need for God's grace yes. and God's guidance yes. along life's narrow way? Yes. Yes. So point number one, we must embrace a relentless pursuit of Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. Point number two, we must strive to engage in self-examination and walk in humility as we pursue Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. Right. And let me throw this in parenthetically. Walking around saying you're humble doesn't mean the exact opposite. Amen. A humble person never declares that they are humble. <laughs> Last but not least, there must be intentional perseverance in our progression towards possessing God's promises. I'm going to say it one more time. There must be intentional perseverance. We have to do it on purpose. In our progression, we can't progress if we don't try to progress. So there must be an intentional perseverance in our progression 
towards possessing God's promises. That means as we progress, we got to keep our eyes on the prize. Perseverance is the key to progressing in our spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Despite facing obstacles, setbacks, and challenges, we are called to press forward towards the promises that God has in store for us. Amen. By persevering, and we persevere by our faith. By faith, with determination. And as we are determined, we are trusting God. So as we move, we progress closer to possessing the abundant life. Somebody say the abundant life. The abundant life. Possessing the abundant life and the blessings he has prepared for us. And I want you to know that God loves you so much that he has prepared a blessing for you with your name on it. And because it has your name on it, I can't take it and nobody can't take it away from you. That's right. Number one, we embrace a relentless pursuit of Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. Number two, we must strive to engage in self-examination and walk in humility as we pursue Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. And last but not least, there must be an intentional perseverance in our progression towards possessing God's promises. My brothers and my sisters, we understand that life is full of setbacks and disappointments. But we must engage in a relentless pursuit. There will be points in our lives where we have unmet expectations, but we must engage in a relentless pursuit. The enemy wants us to think that the race cannot be won. We must engage in a relentless yeah. pursuit. Yeah. See the songwriter says, earthly friends Amen. may prove untrue. Yes. Doubts and fears assail. One still loves and cares for you. Tell your neighbor Jesus never fails. Never. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, when the enemy rises up, tell yourself there's no failure in God. When victory seems far and the failure seems close, tell your neighbor there is no failure in God. When opposition seems overwhelming and dark clouds are above, reflect on the fact that God never fails. When challenges in our life seem large and doubt creeps in, Point to yourself and say, there is no failure in God. As we face trials that test our devotion, when the road ahead seems unclear, when fear knocks at the door of our hearts, when turmoil calls and uncertainty rises up, there is no failure in my God. Just when I need him, Jesus is near, yeah. just when I falter, right. just when I fear, yeah. ready to help me yeah. and ready to cheer, yeah. just when I need him, just when I need him most, yeah. in times of despair, yeah. he's there, yeah. just when I need him, Hallelujah. when I feel like giving up, uh -huh. he's there, yeah. just when I need him. When we don't know how to respond, he's there just when we need him. When darkness surrounds our horizon, Jesus is there just when we need him. In moments of hopelessness, 
in moments of doubt, Jesus is there just when I need him. At the edge of defeat, and it seems like all hope is gone. Jesus is there just when I need him. When nights are long and the dawn seems distant, Jesus is there just when I need him. In the depth of uncertainty and in the darkness of mind, Jesus is there just when I need him. When the road of doubt cast its veil, when the shadow a death seems close when the storm rages and peace seems distant. He's there just when I need him. Since Jesus is there, keep pressing towards the upward call. Since trouble don't last, keep pressing towards the upward call. Jesus is the answer and Jesus is the cure. Because joy comes in the morning. Keep pressing upward to the upper tongue. Because my faith looks up to me. Thou Lamb of Calvary. Keep pressing forward to the upward tongue. See the songwriter said, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying at I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land. See a higher plane I have found. Lord, plant my feet on solid ground. When I'm sick, Lord, plant my feet. When there's doubt, Lord, plant my feet. When sickness tries to take over my body, Lord, plant my feet. When they call me anything but a child of God, Lord, plant my feet. There's power. There's power. There's wonder-working power. It is the blood of the Lamb. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need the Lord, oh, Lord. to plant my feet. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. We all deal with struggles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all deal with Hallelujah. frustration. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Sometimes we don't always yeah. get along. But my brothers and my sisters, we got to keep pressing. We got to keep pressing. No matter what comes our way. So how do we, as God's laborers, press toward a higher level of Christ likeness and Christ awareness? Number one. We have to embrace the relentless pursuit of the Christ likeness and Christ awareness. Number two, we have to engage in self-examination. And it should be our goal to walk in all humility as we keep pressing forward to be more like Christ and more aware of his presence. But last but not least, there must be intentional perseverance in our progression towards possessing God's promises for us. My challenge on today is that you keep running. Don't stop. Don't break your stride. Keep running. It's a relentless pursuit of Christ's likeness and Christ's awareness. And it does not stop. Tell your neighbor, keep running. Tell your other neighbor, give him a high five. Say, keep running. The doors of the church are open.